Welcome back, everyone, to another exciting episode of Full Circle. I'm your host, as always, Odo Harmon Jr. Please find me at odoharmonjr.com. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying it now. Just going to add it on. Yeah. Uh, I'm the other host, Jared Friedrich. You can find me at Tomb Velo. We have an exciting episode for you this week. Uh, Microsoft has unveiled the Xbox Series X, the latest console from themselves. Yes, the XSX, not the latest snowboarding game phenomenon S- so s-o-x-o-x-o-x so, uh, they yeah. just keep hacking our end right um so finally we have the trifecta of the switch is here the playstation 5 is coming out and now uh the xbox so finally we're kind of we've, we've become desynced from the normal generations i don't know i'm still i'm still hoping for the switch pro switch pro maybe all right We'll be talking about the Game Awards. It finally happened. What is becoming the, I don't know, cornerstone, quintessential Game Awards show of the year? You know, because all the major sites have their own individual Game Awards. And this isn't one, this won't be, you know, the king daddy of them all. But, like, this will be the award show of the games. You know, remember Spike tried it for a little bit? And that was just. <laughs> remember Spike tried for a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. Yeah, but this year was a. <laughs> R.I.P. G4. Aw. Yeah. Aw. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's getting better and better each year. This is his fifth year, and we'll be talking all about that in the winners. But first, we are in the future. That's right. Steven Universe future. They did not make us wait five years to try and figure out what was happening. It dropped in a four-episode special. Um, Within, what, two months of the movie? Exactly, yeah. Um, and then we'll be getting regular episodes. So yay! Let's break. So let's break some of that down, right? So the episodes consisted of little homeschool guidance, rosebuds, rosebuds. <laughs> it was a sled. Spoiler, spoiler. It was, it was a sled at the, the end. The whole time. The movie was cool cinematically. Steven was a sled. Oh no! No. Citizen Kane is the joke. Yeah. People. Okay. I mean, he could have been actually. <laughs> he should just turn into a sled. Anthony no. should have came in back as a sled at some point. Okay, so let's let's launch into that, right? So this okay. this whole series, uh, first and foremost, is obviously a lot more mature, and I don't mean like, I mean yes, slightly darker materials, but the not in a sexual context, not in a sexual context. The intellect of it is much funnier. So in the very first episodes, they do a series of fourth breaking little nods, right? It's like oh, here are all the here. Hey, you're wondering how we're gonna fix this gym without the others? Don't worry. They gave the essence of White Diamond, and essence. You know, he winks at the screen. It's like, who are you? He's like, don't worry, I know that too. Winks at the screen. I'm like, okay, we're. Oh no, that, that was my favorite. Line. Like, who are you? Like, that used to be a loaded question, but now I can say with full confidence, I am Steven Universe. Right. So the series has grown up just like they expected. The audience has grown up as well. Uh, Even though most of us were probably already adults anyway. That's true. Um, <laughs> But yeah, along with that, Steven is also full-on teen angst mode. Um, we got, uh, it wasn't just for the movie. He is <laughs> in that swing of things. You know, and I and it's also <laughs> more mature in the sense that, uh, what was the second episode called? Uh, Guidance. Guidance, where Steven messes up in a typical Steven fashion, but now has the foresight, or now has the maturity to understand that, like, Okay, oh. I messed up, and also has the maturity not to be like the crystal gems need to fix this. Like, no, I, I can, I can fix this. I learned my lesson. I even right. <laughs> like, likewise, the crystal gems, specifically in Guidance Amethyst, is, I mean, they all still love Stephen, but they're no longer taking his nonsense. She's just sitting there. Well, well, well. Look who came crawling back. <laughs> I like she's like, you want a snow cone? No, that's not, <laughs> it's not an actual just snow cone. Syrup. It's, just... <laughs> it's very, very amethyst. I love how it even it was gonna end. Like Steve was like, "Yeah," and this was normally how it normally end. Oh no, everything's gone horribly no, wrong. No, no, no. Uh, we have the evolution of his powers, right? Um, so Pink Steven is making is coming out more and more. Uh, to what end? I is, we don't entirely know yet. He's getting super speed, super strength, super voice shattering skills, and this isn't gonna backfire in any horrible way. Absolutely not. All right, so the first two episodes were fun and light. We got to see meet new gems. We finally got their names. We finally got some voice acting. We got to see good old Crazy Lace. Yes. <laughs> no, my favorite uh, from the new gems now is Little Larmar. <laughs> He's Steven. I, like, don't worry, Steven. 
one day I will make you scream. <laughs> it's like I love operating the roller coaster. I love the screams. I of love children. I love the screams of children. <laughs> you know, I love the end because it was so sweet. Even though we know it was innocent, when it was just like, "Thank you, Stephen." Like even though Stephen completely screwed up, he did help one gym find a new passion. It was like I love handing out gifts to children. The laughter is is better than even screams. Ah, uh, thank but, you, but Monster it, Inc. <laughs> But yes, though, it was precious. But the last two episodes, I say, were clearly the stars That's of So we the... start dropping the Stephen Bombs here. Yeah, so let's get started. Rosebud was the most cringiest, wonderful piece of art I've seen in a while. Right. Uh, again, ca- carrying on the mature themes, like, again, the jokes don't say anything. It's more what they don't say. Right? Just, like, everything Greg says is just like, oh, so, like, hey, want to join us for dinner? No. Nope. nope. And then I also, like... Amethyst's face when she was with the Famethyst, which I love that name. Ah. She's like doing the conga line. And Steven's like, hey, hey you want to come over and help me? She's like the face she makes just like. <laughs> just freeze and contort. She, she had the best time in the episode. She literally came back <laughs> after it was all over, after just having her good old bro fist. Right. No, th- this is, uh, I think, what we call in live action. A lot of face acting was done in this. Yeah, so if in case you didn't know, uh, Rosebuds features the freedom of all the Rose Quartz. And they all more or less look like Steven's mom, which one looking one for one like Steven's mom's. And for reasons that if you watch the series, you can completely understand. It causes awkwardness all around. Steven awkwardly invites them to dinner and for a sleepover. And everyone is forced to interact with all these essential rose courses that look and remind them of Rose in various ways. And it's just... And not just the fact that they remind everybody of her, but the fact that we now know that Rose did some rather dubious things. And, you know, we haven't actually worked out our feelings on that yet either. Yeah, and uh, it's cool because you think, per the movie, you think Steven's actually gotten past his mom thing, and he hasn't. Well, it's, it's, it's more or less, he thought it, he keeps finding out more things, and that's causing him struggle. Because, like, he's gotten over all the stuff he knew about, and he doesn't want to have to really get over stuff he's just not finding out about, which I can understand that. Right. I mean, he got out of the major identity crisis of who is, who is she and is he under her thumb? Yeah. No. Is he his own person, or is he just her? Right. Yeah. And now, but is he responsible for her actions still? And, I mean, no, but he obviously still feels this way. And that's, we got that in the previous episode with Guidance, where yeah. he, he just feels this great burden that he has to fix everything. And, you know, like Amethyst said, like, it, 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 you've done all you can. You don't have to always try to fix any things. And he even says, like, now that he's fixed, he's like, is he losing his touch? Now has he become hyper sensitive to trying to help every little thing and that's you know what guys about and yes. speaking to, <laughs> speaking to the maturity thing you were talking about i really love that the end like you said steven had a connection with all these rose courses but he didn't know how and he didn't know how he should interact with them and they he came to realize they're more really they're really siblings they're not his mother he's not their they they all were created by a single mother and they all have to face the consequences of her actions somehow so what i love especially about that is i i felt entirely selfish when they pointed it out it's not just, you know, everybody on our side that's embarrassed or awkward around the Rose Quartzes. The Rose Quartzes themselves are self-aware that this is an awkward situation. And I felt selfish and guilted by that moment. They just uh, thought it was just a one-way street. Yeah, yeah. there was just a one-way street. I'm like, And then, you know, I'm like, oh, that's right. Other people have. And once again, the series in a unique way has made me realize that other people have feelings and emotions that should be attended to. It's not all about Steven. It's not all about Jim. Steven or quote-unquote, me. Yeah, and then uh, the last episode, which was volleyball, volleyball. was oh, the piece de la so, resistance, so as great. they like to call it. The resisting piece. Wait, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so we get the return of Pink Pearl. Um, who we No sw- longer under White Diamond's control. Right, whom we swiftly uh, rename volleyball to avoid confusion between regular our Pearl, um, and thus we will be referring to her that way throughout any other analysis of Steven Universe. So volleyball comes to get healed, obviously, because Steven has a little, little practice. Shop, right? But uh, it doesn't work because her gym is not actually broken. This is pure psychological damage. And so, you know, we go on an epic adventure of like, well, who broke her? It must have been White Diamond. Oh, no. She had this scar before. Long before. And so we get to see this great... Again, carrying kind of for the sibling theme between Pearl and Volleyball about, well, who knew mom better? Well, I knew her first. Well, I knew her longer. Well, I, you know, well, I knew 
her as a re relentless tyrant. Well, I knew her as a kind soul who only wanted to change. Oh, she would never change. And this real tension going back and forth. You know, it was, I, I mean, I don't want to get too deep, but I feel like it's almost Stockholm Syndrome for the both of them. A little bit, yeah. Two pink diamond, not, yeah, not exactly. white diamond. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know... If we eventually find out that volleyball is perfectly fine, mm -hmm. like nothing is physically wrong with her, and that the manifestation of her broken eyes from you know her her time because Pink Diamond ultimately did hurt her. We don't know if it was intentional or not. Given Pink Diamond, it might have been literally intentional. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Right, but this is also a great uh, side note to say this is where we're occurring for the story arc of Stevens developing powers that he is not fully in control of these things, and he is manifesting powers that old Pink Diamond definitely had yeah. and you know we, i think he, she said best like when uh our pearl well pearls like she's a healer she's this she's a that and then pink diamond listed all because steven's only ever used the helpful powers he's never right. tapped into the fighting i guess you know side of her so what i'd like to say here is my own personal theory i haven't seen out thrown out there a lot right so pink diamond had sonic powers that could destroy things and you know there's whatever her diamond aura used to be but this isn't entirely new, right? Because we've seen the giant rose quartz shield that Steven has. When it's hit struck, it releases a sonic attack. Oh, you mean the, the one that, like, like gear sounding? Yeah, like, the, the big, big, big one. Okay. Like, when that's struck, it vibrates out and neutralizes gym magic or technology. We've seen this before. Um, so it's not entirely stretch of imagination that this is some sort of power that can negate or completely destroy gems and we've seen pink diamond shattering rage power when we first actually physically saw her when she was talking to yellow on the foreign moon planet mm -hmm. base wherever they were and she went like you know she destroyed the outpost essentially well we only see her destroy the mirror but it, and, it's the, and the outpost it, still exists I mean, that's it, where they they yeah, are but it was implied that that it's in ruins right so it's not destroyed as in not there but right it was implied that Pink's little tantrum was one that, you know, took it out of commission, so to speak. Exactly. And so um, let's let's wrap up the segment with the episode saying that uh, the Pearls come to a deep understanding um, and that they both need to continue to work on their mental and emotional scars. Yeah, the, my favorite line would be uh, volleyball, when, when everything's going to hell in the episode, volleyball asks Pearl, how did you ever get over this? And Pearl just applies. I didn't. Did it. Um, and right, and by the end of the episode, we don't know if uh, her scar is or will ever be healed. Yeah, it's alluded. You know, we don't ever see the left or right. I'm not sure which side of her face is on, but we don't see that her side. Her left. Of face. Okay, we don't see the left side. They purposely angle it. It's beautiful, but you know, we're left wondering: Did she get over that mental hump and right. able to fully, you know, heal her physical appearance? Right. So. Speaking of people who might not ever go over get uh, get over tragedies, all the losers of the game awards. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. <laughs> no, no, we'll go with the winners. So, I think so. Let's just do a quick breakdown here of uh, well, give us a quick if you can, Odell, of um, what the game awards is. All right, so the game awards were started by Jeff Keighley. You may know him as video game every man. He is very he's an advocate of video games. He's been on like CNN, Fox. Various news outlets always promoting, you know, video game awareness. It's, Reach, uh, it's reaching impact. Yeah, um, there was a time where, like, back when I say early mid two thousands, when all the news stations were like, you know, video games are wrong, violence and stuff. He was always that guy to be like, we're people who've never played a game, and here's this guy who apparently knows about it. Right. So he's a great advocate, spokesperson. That's what I was looking for. He's he's basically the greatest spokesperson video games has in modern era that I can think of. And he starts the Game Awards, and the Game Awards is essentially, you know, what the Oscars, Grammys, et cetera is. Yes, there's other organizations that award these awards, but he's trying to make it the pinnacle of... Overall gaming. Yeah, you know, it's mostly on Twitch and streaming services now, but it's got, it's came a long way in five years. I went to the first one. The first one or the second one, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And pretty much, you could just waltz in. You just could have showed up at the time, <laughs> maybe had a ticket, maybe not. And just sat down. Mm -hmm. you know, now it's like a black tie fair, red carpet event. You know, uh, celebrities from ranging from superstars like Steph Curry and movie stars like Vin Diesel. Which, for an actor, he really was just horrible up there. I'm sorry, man. It's just, just really bad. Well, 
can't all be winners. <laughs> this is true, but so and you know, and all the winners are there. You know, they sit in the front row. They're all dressed to the nines. So in the coming years, it's still remember a lot of these award shows have already had their hundredth, 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 hundredth show. It's one hundredth. This so this is the fifth game year for the game awards. <laughs> yes. Wow, I just got lost. There we go. But okay, let's yeah. let's rein it back in. Let's announce the winners, the categories in each winner. All right, so we for the VR AR game, we got Beat Saber, which Beat Meat Saber winner, <laughs> which makes sense because it's probably the only VR game I see advertised regularly anytime ever. I was gonna say it's largely the only game you can play, kind of standing still and like achieve it. And uh, for those who didn't know, watch Green Day was a surprise musical guest, and now their music is featured in Beat Saber. So there we go. And you know, just getting that. So best strategy game, Fire Emblem Three Houses. This makes a lot of sense. It does. One, it's been probably one of the breakout JRPGs this year. Mm -hmm. I really do want to play it because I haven't played it, but everyone says as great as the combat is, it's the <laughs> I don't I don't want to call it like school battle simulator but well it's a strategy game That's yeah so, <laughs> so it involves a lot of going to classes you know parent it's like if persona met fire emblem but in the right way not exactly cloning way it's not like persona like invented the you know the whole right sim part of it but yeah apparently you know it's a great game compared to the other ones some of these are just pretty much extensions of other games it's yeah the sports racing game of the year you know i enjoyed this one crash team racing nitro field one and one, I think it's funny because they combine sports and racing, and Crash beat out you know the Fifas and the Maddens and. But those, the, I mean, but those we we know what those games are. We've had them for the past like twenty years. Yeah. Like, is there anything new about any of those games? Yeah, and for people mm -hmm. who aren't a fan of retro games winning or remakes, I'm liking the new remake. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> the, the new remake systems are almost new games like the Resident Evil Two and Three. That mm -hmm. is the essence of the game completely remade from the ground up and modern era and technology like the crash and spiral games were and i feel like remakes going forward you know a la a link to the past not link to past link's awakening mm -hmm. all remakes should be that now we should not get the now higher res right we, same game we don't need a port that you tell the tell it to res uh to re render these picture you know we don't need what you're saying yeah a thousand pixels of the same 8-bit thing yeah so kudos to that so, so for a score and music? Now, what? first, I was surprised by this. It was Death Stranding, but then I thought about it, and it kind of makes the most sense. Right, because, okay, it was up against, like, Cadence of Hyrule and Kingdom Hearts 3, uh, Devil May Cry 5, and Sonora, Wild Hearts, you know, like, games that are kind of more known for actual music. And, and I'm not going to lie. Kingdom Hearts 3, we're all never going to get the same remake of... And you don't hear me say... But, um, but okay, Death Stranding kind of makes sense for the fact that he... Board. It was a movie, yeah. So a full film score probably is more meaningful than Cadence of Hyrule. Just like boo -doo -doo -doo. like it's a it's a good song, but it's just kind of a yeah. beep boop. And uh, the other uh, games on Cadence of Hyrule, Devil May Cry Five, Kingdom Hearts Three, uh, Scenario, Wild Hearts. These are all basically remixes of songs that already existed in the round of these games. Yes, there are some new versus Death Stranding, which is probably 100% our original score. I don't know every song in the game. I'm pretty sure there's some just songs that existed, but for the most part, it's an original score. And, and I mean, that, that means something. There's something to be said for originality. All right, so the best role-playing game. This game won a lot. It, it was, did. It was Disco Asylum, Asylum? Elysium. Elysium, there you go. It's, it was an indie game where you're a detective. It's a murder mystery. It's a, one of those PC games. And apparently it's the best thing since sliced bread. I haven't played it, but kudos to it. I mean, it beat out the Outer Wilds, Monster, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, Kingdom Hearts 3, and Final Fantasy XIV. So those are some heavy hitters in that category. Right. All right, so the next one is, I honestly find this category astounding that exists against. It's performance mm -hmm. by real people. Right, uh, which we should note that again uh, from Death Stranding, Norman Reedus didn't win. Right again, he everyone everyone just thought he was going. Well, yes and no. As as we heard, as you may or may not have heard, the reviews for Death Stranding are it's not great. It's it's a it's a mixed bag if you've ever seen one. And it's, we're not even like we're not talking about the good bad mixed bag. We're talking about literally everything from like five to nine. Just like if it was one of those charts, the dots would just be kind of everywhere. Uh, I was gonna say basically you either are uh, Hideo Kojima, uh, Hideo Kojima, or Norman Reedus, 
or you're not. Like, <laughs> you either, like, I know, they clearly had a vision and a joy that they were aiming for, and you either completely jive with it or you don't. So the actual winner, though, um, is... Mad Mickelson. Sin. For his portrayal of... Hey, we talked about him last week, right? Uh, Bond villain, Cried Blood, Casino Royale. Oh, is he? Yeah. Huh. Uh, Mal- Matt Mickelson was actually... I don't know. Um, yeah, we can probably find the game later or display it here for our YouTube uh, viewers. Yeah, so... But yeah, but before we go on, I just think that's amazing, that performance, because a lot of people never took video games seriously, but... If you look, even in older video games, people, the voice actor stuff, really put their heart and soul into some of these roles. So, but now we're actually getting actual face actors for it, which I think might be the breakout moment, right? In the same way that nobody, no, celebrities never were in um, cartoon animated films until kind of Roger Williams with Aladdin. And then suddenly it became the thing to do. So this might be our launching break moment here. It wasn't Roger, Ro- Ro- Robert Williams pretending to be a genie. It was just Robert Williams and he is the genie. Yeah. Yeah. So I like this category too. Ongoing game. Because <laughs> some games don't technically... It's a, it's a weird category, but I guess you we have enough of them now, right? So yeah. um, it's Fortnite. Yeah, which, I mean, not not a big surprise, but I, I feel like maybe these other games could have you know if we're basing on ongoing and still relevant then yeah i guess fortnite is the clear winner because it has been going on for quite a while and it's still very much relevant which will be interesting because later when we get to overall esports um they don't win well it's because fortnite may be popular but when we get to the esports that is literally worldwide like i i know i'm like yeah okay but uh best narrative so here we have disco elysium again and, um, again, it's a detective murder mystery, and the games that beat out, like, Control, A Plague Tale, Death Stranding, The Outer Worlds, it, from what I've heard, that's believable. I wouldn't say any of those other games have the best narrative, because Death Stranding's one of the continual hit points was the narrative. Right. Mm. Uh, I found this to be a weird, eclectic, uh, number of games. The so this is the best multiplayer yeah. game, which... You know, you could have had multiple games in this category, but the uh, nominees were Apex Legends, Borderlands 3, Call of Duty, Tetris, and 99, and Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Apex Legends wins. That, that makes sense. Which, of those, sure, but I, I don't understand I don't understand overall why, why they would include Fortnite also in this category. It, like, I'm not saying it make it win, but it definitely... Or just any <laughs> other game. Smash Brothers, like, that's kind of by default a great multiplayer game. Uh, so moving on to mobile game, we get Call of Duty Mobile, sure. Grindstone, <laughs> Scenario Wild Hearts again, Sky, The Children of Light, which is basically a journey for your mobile phone, but not as good. Yeah. <laughs> what the golf. What the golf. Call of Duty Mobile 1. Right. You know, we always talk about this, I'm still not the biggest fan of mobile games. Okay, I'm not a fan of mobile games that are, that are full-fledged games where you can't play on the go and it spurts. Right. Because then I'm like, if I'm about to, like, be locked in and be, only be able to, like, I need, like, an hour or two to dedicate to this, I'm going to play it on the console, not my phone. Right. Uh, independent game. Again, Disco Elysium. So you can see the, the travel here. Yeah. So games for impact. Gris is the winner. Yeah. So so we here have game direction. <laughs> and so, Death Strand, you had, you had a great idea. You really tried. Great job for Death Stranding for really trying. No, but I, I understand it's like... Game direction means, like, you know, the production, where you want it to go. And, I mean, it, it might as well be called the most ambitious project. The, the, yeah. It's like, good it, job. It, it just was. Fresh indie game. Disco Elysium. Best <laughs> best fighting game. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I'm personally excited by that. I don't know if necessarily it should have won against maybe other other hard. Okay, Jump like, Force. Ha. Huh. Right. Dead or Six or Alive. Yes. Mortal Kombat 11 is probably biggest contender. Samurai Showdown had a great showing, but I don't, I don't know. I, I so, feel like it's it's Street Fighter with swords. Right. I was going to say, against the other nominees, I think for sure Smash Brothers deserves to win. Overall, maybe not. I, I mean, the, considering it broke Street Fighters 2 record. That's fair. I, that, a record that's apparently been held since the 90s, amazingly, somehow. Yeah. Um, the next category is the Nintendo category. Just kidding. It's best family game category. <laughs> Which consists of Luigi's Sold. Mansion 3, Ring Fit Adventure, Super Mario Maker 2, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Yoshi's Crafted World. Which, 
All right. Cool. Well, the, why not? The Nintendo category. Yeah. So this time, Luigi's Mansion 3 actually wins. Um, I have to agree. Uh, it's probably the easiest game that everybody can play. Thinking of the others, the mechanics don't really work out for like, many Kids people. aren't going to be working out. Mm -mm. Super Mario Maker 2 is actually just a sadistic game in disguise. Super Smash Brothers is, again, just angry fighting. So, mm. you know, and, and, your world. Say, and your parents won't be able to pick it up. Like I'm thinking of what game my parent could play with me. Honestly, Luigi's Mansion. They could they can handle that. All right, esports team. The esports we're gonna just blow through this because I don't really keep up with that. But yeah. congratulations to all these people. I assume you deserve. Congratulations it. to G two esports for winning the best esports team. Esports player. Congratulations, Buga. Yeah. Esports host. Congratulations, Shaj. Okay. People come up with better names. I can read. I I get it. It's your tag. <laughs> but like we're we're becoming a mature like Steve Universe future like mature. industry audience like. Okay, Golden Boy, Red Eye, Candice, cool. Like if your if your if your name features underscores, backward letters, numbers, and things I just can't pronounce. No, just a little, just a little bit. Uh, game of the year, League of Legends again. Esports game of the year. Esports game of the year. Uh, Fortnite didn't win. Surprising. The best <laughs> esports event is the League of Legends uh, World Championship again. Not surprising given that League of Legends won. Yeah. The best esports coach. Congratulations, Zani. Um. Uh, Sonic. Sonic. Sorry, at a yeah. distance, it looked like an E. Content Creator of the Year, congratulations, Shroud. Community Support, Destiny 2, you have supported your... Uh, your congratulations for being the least toxic, <laughs> I, I, I guess. Or server, or server maintenance, or... Yeah. Audio Design, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Art Direction, Control, and they absolutely deserve to win. Uh, <laughs> Jerry was waiting for this I was one. waiting for this one. No, just, I love the design of the game. It is a... It, we haven't discussed it. It is a game where you were tasked, kind of like the FBI, to sequester, or fringe if you ever saw that, to sequester paranormal and reality breaking phenomena, and it is just beautiful and aesthetic to look at. Uh, so yes, I... Golf claps. Yes. Action adventure game. Sekiro, Shadow Dies Twice. It's a Sekiro Sekiro. No, no, this, 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 no, the spelling doesn't, it's, it's just, I always hear it two different ways, and I heard it two different ways last night, and I heard people complaining about each way, and I'm just like, I, I need a Japanese person to say this for me. Probably Sekiro. Um, action game, Devil May Cry 5. And, and finally, game, 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 game of, of the year. year. Sekiro, Shadow Dies Twice. It beat out Control, which actually won a couple of Game of the Year awards, which some people were upset because an indie studio can't make Game of the Year, which I never understood that logic, but whatever. Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Death, didn't just... That wasn't gonna win, but definitely deserves the nominee. I think. Right, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate wasn't gonna win. I think it deserves the nominee. Yeah, that's fair. I I I feel like it's certain. It's like in movies, like there's certain games they'll never win it. Like there's certain movies they'll never win it. Not because they're not good, just because. Right. So, um, but those are all the nominees that came out of the Game Awards. But more than that, other announcements came out of the Game Awards, and that would be the Xbox uh, Series, Series X. X. So, the thing I like about that is Xbox has kind of just foregone the console look, and it's just a PC tower. Right. A very small PC tower. I recently learned out it is only one Xbox controller wide and two Xbox controllers tall. Perfect ratio. Yeah. So, it's it looks like a tower. You'll see pictures, <laughs> pictures here. It's got all the bells and whistles. Super powerful. 4K, 8K, yada, yada, yada. But Xbox has promised that they have 16 exclusive IPs, new games coming to it. I'm assuming within a year of launch, which is that's that's still a lot, mm -hmm. you know, if they're exclusive, and I'm promising all this stuff. But the thing I like about the most is they seem to be stripping away all the nonsense of everything that's not game related from it. Well, okay, yes you, and no, no, right? Because there is still some debate about what does the series mean in Xbox Series X? Are they about to launch a whole series of products or variation consoles? So I I read in a review that they calling it. They want the X to become, you know, since the One X came out, mm -hmm. the, to be synonymous with great gaming power. So it's the X series. Again, that, that didn't really answer anything, but... Or, if you count the number of products Xbox has produced, it's 10. Oh. Yeah. So they're... Da -da 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 on the screen. But, yeah, it was announced at the Game Wars. It's exciting. And there's not really much to talk about yet, but we will dive into it another day when we get more information. Exactly. But as always, I'm Odo Harmon Jr. Please find me at Odo Harmon Jr. at all your favorite social media websites. Except Reddit, because we're boycotting right now. And I'm Jer Jared Burdett. You can find me at Tomb Thank you, and shout out to all of our Patreons, our patrons. 
uh, you can become a member too for exclusive early content. Remember to follow us also at FC Podcast 23. So until next time, everybody, uh, have a great week. Enjoy your day. Thank you.